Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Wigging Out with Bobby Z. It's a Wiggy Weavy Wednesday, yay! Um, so today's video is going to be another kind of short little tip trick video. This is going to be an introduction to ventilating and wig making. Now I'm not going to really show you guys anything today, but I'm mainly going to talk about getting started with ventilating and wig making and the steps that will help you get there. When you want to start learning how to ventilate, this is what was told to me and this really helped me. This really kind of got me into the groove and the pattern of how to ventilate is how is to latch hook. Now latch hooking and ventilating are pretty much exactly the same thing. Just ventilating is teeny, 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 tiny hairs. And latch hooking is big piece of yarn on a rug. So it's pretty much, it's the same knot. It's the same little, it's the same knot. It's the same pattern. It's the same hand motion, but it's way, way smaller. So I was told that if I wanted to learn how to ventilate, I would have to latch hook an entire rug, small rug, and that's how I would learn. Now, granted, I only did about that much of the thing because I got bored. Um, but eventually, I just kind of dove right into ventilating. And I've, you know, been ventilating for close to three years now. And it's, you know, it's still a work in progress. I still figure out different ways to maneuver my needle and my hair and different ways of tying and stuff like that. Like, it's you're always learning. You never stop learning, which is what I love about being in the hair industry and being in the entertainment industry is that there's always something new. There's always something to be learned. There's always a tip and a trick to try. And, you know, sometimes it'll work for you. Sometimes it won't. And that's just what, that's what um, hair and entertainment is, is it's just experimentation. Now, to me, there's a difference between being a wig maker and being a wig artisan. So for me, I call myself a wig maker because I know that in the realm of wig making and the depths that wig making can go to, I'm only at the bottom, bottom, bottom. I have a lot to learn. I have a lot to grow. I have a lot of things to experiment with. And that's fine. It takes time. You can't just become a, a wig artisan overnight. That being said, to me, the difference between a wig maker and a wig artisan is a wig maker is somebody like myself that will make a lace front, um, adding a lace front to a wig, or building facial hair, stuff like that. Small small, less intricate things. But to me, a wig artisan is somebody that can pattern and make an entire full lace wig front to back, tie the whole thing, do all of that and make it look good. I mean, I say to make it look good because there's lots of people out there that make full lace wigs and tie the whole things themselves, but they don't look good. Especially with these stupid baby hairs because it looks like you tried to cut bangs and you messed up. A properly tied and made wig will not need baby hairs to look more natural. And I know that not all of my lo wigs look good too, and that's fine. So that's the main difference between being a wig artisan and a wig maker is I find that it's almost like being a barber. Like you can be a barber, you can be a master barber. So I, I feel that a good analogy would be a master barber would be a wig artisan and a wig maker would just be a barber. Something like that. So that's why I consider myself a wig maker. I won't be a wig artisan for a very long time, uh, mainly because I don't have the patience to sit and hand tie a whole wig. I would love to learn how to do it, but oh Lord, sometimes wigs take me weeks to front just because I can't sit down and do it. So that's besides the point. So I've gotten a lot of questions about wig making and ventilating and all of that and how to start. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get yourself a canvas head like I talked about. First thing you need to buy if you're going to be being a wig maker or you're going to be styling your own wigs yourself or you want to sell them or anything like that is you really, 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 really need to get a canvas block. Like I can't, I can't stress it enough. Don't build a lace front wig on a styrofoam head or on a mannequin head. That's fine. Do a quick weave on one, whatever, because you're going to wear it twice and it's going to fall apart because you used glue. No tea, no shade, but to me... If you're doing a quick weave by gluing hair onto a styrofoam head on a wig cap, that's not wig making to me. I'm sorry, that's arts and crafts cut and paste. Like, that's not wig making. If you're gluing it, no. <laughs> sorry. So do it all you want with the quick weave, with the glue, whatever. But if you're actually making something to sell or m making something to last, use a canvas head. That is all I can say is use a canvas head. You're also going to need um, hair, 
uh, you can use synthetic hair, you can use human hair, you can use yak hair, you can use horse hair. I don't, even, I don't even know where the heck you buy horse hair. I don't even know. Besides, you know, horse hair you sew in hats. I mean, like, horse hair, like, actual hanging hair. No idea. I actually learned how to ventilate with synthetic hair, which I actually found to be a little easier. Synthetic hair doesn't have the cuticle outside of it like human hair does. So when you use a synthetic hair to ventilate, it kind of just slides right through. Um, I find that ventilating with synthetic hair, it's easiest to start with a straight hair and to use the Futura Iron Safe hair, like the protein fiber, iron safe synthetic hair, I think is the best to learn how to ventilate with because it's silky, silky straight and it's pin straight, it's silky smooth and it slides right into knots beautifully. Also going to need wig lace, which um, you can buy wig lace online, you can buy it uh, many different places. Buy my wig lace from DeMeo Brothers. I'm going to put a link here down in the box for you guys. They're located in Jersey, so if you live in New York, um, or on the East Coast, you'll get your lace pretty quick. If you're just practicing, you can just go to the Joanne Fabrics and buy a similar style lace or a power net fabric, something that has that honeycomb pattern. It doesn't have to be lace. Lace is Wig making lace is expensive. You buy it by the yard. It's not cheap. So if you just want to learn and practice, you can buy just netting at Joanne Fabrics or whatever fabric store is near you, and you can start practicing to ventilate on that you're gonna need a ventilating needle. This is what I keep my ventilating needles in, which is basically just a brush, which is a scissor roll I bought at like Sally Beauty like five years ago, literally. And what I did is I just took an industrial sewing machine and I split the middle ones up into four. This was originally six pockets and I turned it into eight pockets by splitting the middle two pockets in half so I could put my needles in there. And then I also can have, th I have Two pairs of regular shears, a pair of thinning shears, and a comb in here usually. But I was working on a project earlier, so I don't have everything in my roll. Um, ventilating needles come in a variety of sizes. It depends on what brand and what store you're buying them from. Mine are from His and Her Hair Supply, which is on the West Coast. Um, they sell pretty much anything you need for wig making. They sell lace, they sell caps, they sell pre-made foundations, they sell ventilating needles, they sell hair, they sell wigs, they sell facial hair, they sell pretty much anything you could ever use for wig making and um, hair purposes. I only, however, bought my needles and my holders there because I find that their needles and their holders are the cheapest that I've found anywhere, but everything else is marginally more expensive than I can get at other places. So I bought my ventilator needles from His and Her Hair Supply. I used to have four. I only have three now. I let someone borrow one a couple years ago, and I never got it back. Um, so Felicia, if you're watching this, you still have my my one one needle out in California. I want it back. Um, I re I'm, it's fine. I'll buy another one. But um, I miss you. So my shout out today is to Miss Alicia Hanowich, my good friend out on the West Coast um, in Santa Maria, California. Uh, I miss you dearly. I love you. Um, but you have my ventilating needle. Oh, my God. Anyway, so ventilating needles come in a variety of sizes. They come in zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm not sure how high up they go. Basically, what the number stands for is how many hairs you can grab per needle. So I had, I used to have a one, one. I don't anymore because Alicia has it. I have a one, two, a two, three, and a three, four. Now, the problem with ventilating needles is when they come to you, they're labeled. They're usually, they either come in a little baggie or they come on a piece of, styro, a, a thin, thin piece of styrofoam and they're woven in there and they're labeled with the number on the styrofoam. However, once you take them out of the styrofoam, unless you make sure you put them back exactly where you got them, you won't know what size it is. So what I did is I bought multiple holders because I knew that I was going to have multiple needles. So I have multiple holders. So And I labeled them with my Dymo label maker. So I have my 3-4, my 1-2, and my 2-3. Honestly, when I first started doing um, ventilating, I would use a 3-4 a lot, um, especially back where your foundation's meeting just to build that up. And then I do two threes and then 1-2 and then 1-1s one just in the front. However, now that I've been ventilating longer, I've, um, I mean, I've known people that have been ventilating for years and have used just the same needle, have never changed the needle, have never broken the needle, have never done any of that. 
And now I understand is because now that I've been doing it for so long, I only use my one two. And honestly, if I had that one one, it that's probably what I would use all the time. Still grab three or four hairs with one of these, depending on the thickness of the hair. So it's fine. So I just put mine in my brush roll and I have the brush roll labeled as well as to which one goes where. So I also can just look at them and grab it. And this is also great because then the little flap here covers the needle and then it closes up and then I never get stabbed with them. Ventilating needles all look exactly the same if you look at them up close. So that is why I said to, if you're going to buy multiples, buy multiple handles and label the handle so you know because if you look at the needle, you can't tell. If I do it over here where it's light. Oh, there we go. Perf. Okay, so as you can see, the needle is a right angle and it's curved. This um, is a short needle. If you buy a long needle, they're curved at less of an angle and then they just go on the end where the hook is. You can't really tell because it's small, but there's a teeny, tiny, tiny little barbed hook going down and over here on the tip of it. And that is how you grab your hair when you go through the lace and you grab your hairs to tie them. You grab them with that teeny, tiny little hook on the end. So what you're probably wondering, like, why do I need to learn how to ventilate? I buy lace fronts. I get them made for me. Why do I want to learn how to ventilate? Um, ventilating is a really good skill to have, especially if you deal, if you work in theater or if you work um, with drag queens or in film or anything like that. It's a great skill to have because you never know when someone's going to be able to help you. I mean, when I was out in California, I was at um, a theater company called PCPA Theater Fest and I was the wig designer, and so I was designing and fronting wigs left and right, and there were some instances where I needed to have more wigs fronted than I could possibly do. I lucked out because the wardrobe supervisor and the costume shop manager both knew how to ventilate well and quickly. So between the three of us, we were able to pound out wigs like it was no one's business, so it was great. So you never know when ventilating will come in handy if you learn. And nine times out of 10, maybe even more than 9.75 times out of 10, when you buy a lace front at the beauty supplier online, the hairline is going to be completely square, or if you're lucky, rounded. Now, most of them that I see are square and they have an angle right here, and that's not realistic looking. I mean, granted, I have a couple of those wigs. I've worn those wigs. I will continue to wear those wigs. It's fine. If you style them right, it's fine. However... You can also add your own hairline by ventilating. So you can see here, this side of the wig is the side I ventilated. So you can see here that this is a um, the wig hair. The hair on the wig stops back there, and yet I still have about a quarter of, to a half of an inch in front of that to hand tie. So I added a widow's peak, and then I added a little bit of a shape and extended this side down a little bit just by tying hairs on. And it only took me not even 45 minutes to do those two things. So it goes really quickly when it's already done and you're just adding hair to it. Learning how to ventilate is pretty easy. It's not something that's really hard. A lot of people can do it, especially if you're crafty or if you like to sew or knit or do a lot of small meticulous things with your hands, jewelry making even, then that's great. You'd be awesome at ventilating. You could pick it up like that. Some people, not so much. There's tons and tons of ventilating tutorials on YouTube. I would definitely do a ventilating tutorial for you guys. I'm sure I'll do one at some point once I figure out um, how to make stuff that zoomed in and not blurry and how to angle the camera and everything. I'm just really kind of dumb when it comes to cameras and stuff. That's why I do hair. So, because cameras and technology really aren't my thing. You guys want to start ventilating and building wigs, you just need to get a block. You need to get some lace. You need to get ventilating needles and some hair. And that's really all you need. So the needles are from His and Her Hair Supply. You can also order hair blocks, lace, and all of that from His and Hers. I find, like I said, that their ventilating needle and holder prices are very good. I find that everything else is a little bit marginally more expensive than I can get here or at other online retailers. But that's me personally. Get yourself some needles and some lace and some hair and just kind of go to town and it's it's pretty easy and it's once you get the hang of it it you can zone out and just do it for hours and it's fine um 
so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my tip today. I'm sorry it was kind of lame, but I hope I kind of helped you guys out and I persuaded some of you to go out there and try some new experiments. So hit me up, send me some messages, send me comments, questions, anything you guys want to learn. I'm here to teach you guys. So give me some comments, give me some love, subscribe to me, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.